Armen Arca's early life is a mystery, with only fragments of her story. Pieced together from various sources, this young girl, born into a prominent family within the Amar Empire, Arca was destined for a life of religious devotion and to service the Empire. However, from a young age, she exhibited a fascination with the occult and the darker aspects of her Armarian faith, particularly the heretical teachings of the Sanisavik. As a young girl, Arka became obsessed with the idea of transcending immortality, seeking ways to extend her life and gain power over death. These obsessions led her into the forbidden texts and practices of the Sanisavik, where she found kindred spirits who shared her thirst for forbidden knowledge. Arka's descent into darkness was gradual but inevitable. As she delved deeper into the teachings of the Sanisavik, she became increasingly disillusioned with the Amara Empire and its rigid dogma. She saw the Empire as a prison, one that sought to control and limit the potential of its people. In the Sanisavik, Arka found a philosophy that celebrated power, individuality and the pursuit of one's desires no matter the cost. This path eventually led Arka to commit acts of heresy that could not be ignored. She was cast out of the Amar Empire, branded as a heretic and forced to flee into the lawless region of New Eden, but exile did not break her. Instead, it fueled her resolve. In the dark corners of the galaxy, far from the reach of the Amar, Arka began to gather followers who were similarly disillusioned and power hungry. In the shadowy underworld of New Eden, Arman Arka became a figure of fear and reverence. She used her knowledge of the occult to establish a powerful cult centered around the worship of blood and also the pursuit of immortality. Her followers, drawn from the ranks of pirates, outcasts and other heretics, were united by her belief in Arca's vision of a new order, one where the strong would rule and the weak would be sacrificed. Arca's cult, while small, was highly influential in the darker regions of space. They were known for their brutal raids on isolated colonies and outposts where they could capture victims for their blood rituals. These rituals were believed to grant Arka and her followers extended life and increased power. Arman Arka's story is not one of a simple villainy, but rather a tragic tale of a girl consumed by her own ambition, her desire for immortality born out of fear of death and a thirst for power, led her down this path of darkness in which there were no return. In the end, Arka became a prisoner of her own desires, forever chasing the unattainable even as it consumed her soul. Though Arka herself may no longer walk the stars, her legacy lives on in the cults and the dark sects that continues to worship her as a prophet and a martyr. To this day, her name is spoken in whispers among those who seek power at any cost, and her teaching remain a dark stain on the history of Amar Empire. Despite her influence, much about Adam and Arka remains unknown. Her final fate is a mystery, with some believing that she achieved immortality that she so desperately sought, while others claim that she was eventually hunted down and destroyed by the Empire she betrayed. Whatever the truth, you will know true fear if you would face her Balgorn in space.
Draclina Merlon was born on Villor 4, a world within the Galente Federation, known for its vibrant culture and democratic ideals. But from the very beginning, her life was marked by a tragedy and isolation. Her mother died during childbirth, leaving her father to raise her alone. Yet, as Draclira knew, it became clear that something was deeply wrong. Her behavior grew increasingly antisocial, characterized by violent outbursts and a shilling lack of empathy. By her teenage years, her father, unable to cope with her growing instability, disowned her. Draclera was subsequently institutionalized in a series of mental facilities where she spent the remainder of her youth. The Federation's attempt to treat her were futile. The institutions failed to contain her growing darkness, and upon reaching the legal age for a release, Draclera was set free, unhealed, and more dangerous than ever. Upon her release, Draclera vanished from the public eye. She crossed the imperial borders, leaving behind the Galente Federation's democracy and ideals. Her destiny was the Blood Raider Covenant, a notorious pirate organization infamous for its grotesque rituals and brutal raids. The Blood Raiders, worshippers of the Sanisabic faith, revered blood as a sacred element, often harvesting it in horrific acts of violence. They saw in Draclera's kindred spirit, a woman whose capability for violence and disregard for life aligned perfectly with their own twisted beliefs. For years, Draclera disappeared into the shadows of the Blood Raiders' domain. Now what transpired during this time remains largely unknown, but when she re-emerged, it was with a newfound purpose, a deep, fanatical loyalty to the Covenant. Draclira was no longer just a troubled young woman, she had become a weapon, a ruthless killer dedicated to spreading terror and chaos in the name of her new masters. Draclira's return to the public eye was as violent as it was unexpected. She led a brutal attack on the Federal Trade Convoy in the Coverin system, far from the usual hunting grounds of the Blood Raiders. The attack was swift and devastating, leaving no survivors, marking Draclera as a significant threat to the Federation. The Galente authorities, recognizing the danger she posed, placed her on the top 10 most wanted lists, where she has remained ever since. The raid on Coverin was more than just an act of piracy, it was a message. Draclera Merlon has embraced her role as a harbinger of the Blood Raiders' dark creed. Her attacks were unpredictable, her methods brutal, and her loyalty to the Covenant unwavering. To those who crosses her path, whether they were traitors, mercenaries, or even other pirates, often met a violent end. Her skill as a pilot was unmatched. Her capacity for violence seems to know no bounds. Draclera's reputation as a sociopath and a psychopath is well earned. She is a figure of pure malevolence, her actions driven by a twisted sense of purpose and an unyielding devotion to the Blood Raider in the dark reaches of space, where the law is but a distant memory. Draclera Merlon reigns as one of the most feared individuals in New Eden. Her story is not one of redemption or heroism. It's a tale of life twisted by tragedy, of a mind consumed by darkness, and of a soul irrevocably lost into the void. In the vast universe of Eve, where players and NPC alike shape the fate of galaxies, Draclira Malone stands as a reminder of the horrors that lurks in the shadows, and the price of embracing the darkness within. Her name, whispered in fear among the stars, will forever be associated with the bloodshed and the terror that she left in her wake. 
and as long as the Blood Raiders continue their grim crusade, Draclera Merlot's legacy will live on. As a dark beacon to all who dare to walk the path of destruction. And if you see the blood-stained apocalypse in space, you now know who she is. Reiser Esrich was born in YC-49 on the Intaki homeworld, a planet known for its artistic culture and philosophical society. But for Reiser, life was far from idyllic. Even as a child, he was an outsider, marked by his unnaturally pale skin and towering height. These physical traits, which would later become a symbol of his terrifying presence, alienated him from those around him. But it wasn't just his appearance that set him apart. Ray Sierra possessed a twisted mind that found joy in cruelty and a sense of power and suffering of others. From a young age, he was drawn into a life of crime. Petty thefts escalated into more serious offenses. And by the time he was a young man, Raisir has become a notorious figure in the Intaki underworld. His criminal activities eventually led to his capture, and he found himself part of the prison convoy destined for a will for in YC-71. But fate had other plans for him. The prison convoy carrying Raisir was intercepted by Blood Raider Strike Force. The raiders slaughtered most of the prisoners, but when they came upon Raisir, something made them pause. Perhaps it was his eerie appearance, or maybe the cold, detached way he looked upon the carnage around him. But the raiders decided to spare him. This decision would prove faithful, not just for Raisir, but for all New Eden. He was introduced into the Sanisabic faith and the Blood Raiders took him in, recognizing in him a potential for something far greater than mere survival. Once within the fold of the Blood Raiders, Rezir's true nature came to the forefront, quickly embraced the Sanisabic faith, which preached that blood was the source of power, and that only the strong were worthy of life, and Rezir soon revealed a sadistic streak that shocked even the most hardened members of the Covenant. He derived pleasure from suffering of others, and his methodical, almost machine-like approach to torture earned him the nickname The Sick Giant. His physical strength and his towering height made him an imposing figure, while his twisted mind made him a perfect fit for the role as a bleeder, a position within the Covenant dedicated to the ritualistic draining of blood from captives, Raisir excelled in this role, his reputation growing with each victim he bled dry, but his ambition did not stop there. Over the years, Raisir's dedication to the Blood Raiders and his ruthless efficiency caught him attention of the Covenant's leadership. He was then promoted taking on more significant responsibilities within the organization. His rise culminated in his appointment as the head of internal security for the Blood Raider Covenant. After he sided with Omir Sarakusa during a power struggle in YC-84. In this position, Razier was tasked with rooting out dissent within the Covenant and ensuring that loyalty to Sarakusa remained absolute. It was a role that suited him perfectly. With his cruel, unfeeling nature, Raisir approached his duties with the same cold precision that had earned him his nickname. Those who dared to question Saracusa's rule found themselves at the mercy of the sick giant. 
and few survived that experience. Brazier's story is one of transformation from a criminal outcast to one of the most feared enforcers within the New Eden's most notorious organizations. His journey is proof of the darkness that can reside within the human soul and the horrifying length to which a person can go when that darkness is nurtured and given power. To this day, Raysir remains a figure of terror within the Blood Raiders. In the shadowy world of New Eden, where power is often measured in blood, hides a very true reality that you will witness if you meet his blood-soaked apocalypse. A noble beginning and a fall from grace. Tarei Namasat was born in YC77 into a minor royal family on Oris. This is one of the Amar Empire's most revered planets. Her early years were marked by the privilege and strict religious upbringing, typical for that station. But beneath the surface of nobility and piety lay a darker nature one that would reveal itself in a shocking and gruesome act of violence. At the age of 20, Tarei was involved in a seemingly minor dispute with her cousin, a disagreement that would change the course of her future life. In a fit of uncontrollable rage, Tarei murdered her cousin in cold blood. When she was found, she was drenched in crimson, her lips stained with the blood of her relative, of whom she had reportedly drank from after slashing her throat. These horrible acts of bloodlust marked the end of her life as a noblewoman, but the beginning of her descent into the shadows. Her family, horrified by her action, quickly disowned her. Cast out from her home and stripped of her title, Tare was exiled from Oris. She was sent to the fringes of the Amar Empire. The shame of her crime, coupled with her newfound freedom from the constraints of her noble upbringing, pushed Tare towards an even darker path. Banished to the edge of the bleak lands, Tarei found herself in a desolate region, far from the splendor of Oris. Now here, among the barren wastelands and forgotten outposts, she lived in solitude for nearly a decade. It was during this time that she fully embraced the teachings of the Sanisabic, an ancient heretical faith that preached the sanctity of blood. Tare's belief in the Sanisabic teachings deepened as she practiced the faith in isolation. The ritualistic aspects of the religion, which emphasized blood sacrifice and the pursuit of immortality, this resonated with her on a primal level. The act of drinking her cousin's blood, once seen as a moment of madness, became a ritualistic initiation into this new way of life. But Therese's isolation would not last forever. Her fate took another turn when she encountered a Blood Raider scout, a member of the notorious pirate faction known for their brutal raids and fanatical devotion to the Sanisabic. This scout, recognizing Therese's potential and the depth of her commitment into the blood rituals, introduced her to the Blood Raiders. This meeting would prove to be the catalyst for Tarei's full induction into the Covenant. Tarei quickly proved herself within the Blood Raider Covenant, demonstrating a keen tactical mind and an unwavering devotion to the cause. 
her past as a noblewoman and her deep understanding of the Amara mindset made her a valuable asset to the Blood Raiders. Over time, she rose through the ranks, her ruthlessness, her efficiency, earning her a fearsome reputation. Her role within the Covenant expanded as she became personally involved with the Blood Raider leadership. Her loyalty and effectiveness in carrying out brutal raids and punishing those who opposed the Covenant brought her to the attention of Umir Sarikusa, an enigmatic and terrifying leader of the Blood Raiders. She also got to know Armen Arka, the Covenant's master of strategy and manipulation. Under the wings of these notorious figures, Tere warned her skills as a commander. She learned the art of psychological warfare from Arka, applying her understanding of fear and control to break the spirit of her enemies from Saracusa. She absorbed the importance of absolute loyalty and the power that came from unwavering belief through the Sanisabic faith. And today, Tere Namasoth stand as one of the most senior tactical commanders within the Blood Raider Covenant. Known as the Crimson Commandress, she is called upon when the Covenant requires swift and brutal action. Her approach to warfare is merciless, she takes no prisoners and leaves no survivors, ensuring that the Blood Raiders' enemies are not just defeated but even forgotten in time. Her reputation for cruelty and her unyielding dedication to the Blood Raiders have made her a figure of fear across the New Eden. To encounter Therese Balgorm on the battlefield is to face the force of nature, relentless, unforgiving and drenched in the blood of her enemies. Therese's story is a dark tale of transformation from a noblewoman born into privilege to a pure monster who embraces blood and death as a way of life. She has found a place where her brutal nature is not just accepted, but celebrated. And in this place of darkness and blood, Tare has become one of the most feared figures in all of New Eden. A true embodiment of the terror that the Blood Raider Covenant seeks to spread across the stars. <laughs>